Okay, so late last year, me and my buddy made a bunch of predictions for 2023. And my big prediction was anamorphic lenses are going to go buck wild. And did I not think they would go that buck wild? They're freaking all over the place from adapters to a bunch of different companies making anamorphic lenses. They're all over YouTube, people shooting with them. So in this video, I'm going to give you two really good reasons why people just have been going nuts over them and maybe a bonus reason if I can think of one. No promises though. So anamorphic lenses. Also shout out to my buddy Lance for letting me borrow this lens. This is his Suray 35 mil anamorphic and I have zero access to any other anamorphics. So thanks Lance. Um, really appreciate it. By this point, if you don't know what anamorphic lenses are, this is a quick little rundown. They are a focal length that gives you a specific squeeze factor. So it shrinks in as much of what you're actually viewing and then later in post you stretch it out. And it, we'll get into what it really does over these two reasons of why I think they're so popular right now. But yeah, that's essentially what it does. It's nothing that wild there's tons of other videos that explain it way better so if you're really looking for that just go watch them so reason number one why people love anamorphic and why i think it's blown up so much is because it just gives your image this certain character that you just can't replicate with anything else like the oval bokeh that huge line like flare that come across that comes across your image just wildly and glows like crazy. Um, and another one that we'll talk about later, that's reason number two, but those are just like the distortion that it can give you, like just the characteristics of that put intentionally into a lens is just something that a lot of people are looking for. A lot of spherical lenses, like a bunch of the RF glass, for instance, like the 28 to 70 are just so clinically perfect that videographers don't like it because it's just too sharp. It's too clean. The flares are li literally even at F2, you'll get a starburst, which is insane to me, but they're just too perfect. It barely flares even without a lens hood. It's a beautiful lens. Don't get me wrong, but when it comes to video, you want something else that kind of makes your image a little more tangible, if you will. Like you want to add like a whole another layer of texture or something in, in your shot to kind of help it feel different. And anamorphic just kind of helps with that, with all these different characteristics that I just listed, like the haziness, the the flares, the oval bokeh, the distortion along the outsides, maybe it's barrel, maybe it's pincushion, like they're all different, but they all have different character. So you get to kind of choose and pick something that fits the vibe that you're looking for. So in my opinion, that's the number one reason why anamorphic has like really blown up because it just helps your image feel different. Reason number two, I'm sorry if I struggle my way through explaining this one, but I'm going to do my absolute best because it's a little technical, but I'll do my best to explain it anyways. So with the anamorphic, you de-squeeze your image. So even though this is a 35 millimeter focal length, once it's de-squeezed by 1.33, you end up getting the width of a 26 millimeter. So you're really not shooting as tight as you normally would with a normal 35 millimeter. Here are some video examples to help show what I'm talking about. So as you can see, the 35 millimeter non anamorphic seems a little bit tight, but you get a good compression at that range. This is what anamorphic really helps with and why so many videographers really enjoy it because if you look at the anamorphic shot, yes, it has that same compression, but look how much wider and how much a bigger field of view 
you have with it. So you get the field of view of a 26 millimeter, but you get the compression of a 35. So this is why it's really common to use something like a 40 or a 50 mil because you get that compression, which is really pleasing to shoot people that way. But you get the nice wide angle of a 40 or a 35 or in this case, a 26 mil. So in my opinion, that's like the number one reason why people choose it, especially anamorphic over something like a spherical lens. It's you just get all the perks in one lens or lenses to help you get something that you normally wouldn't be able to like compose in your shot. So it just gives you a lot more to play around with that a normal spherical lens would not. So hopefully that made sense. And reason number three, I feel like is obvious. It just helps make your work look different. Sometimes viewers, especially like I'm in the wedding business and the viewer or your customer or client, whatever you want to call them, is really just looking for something different sometimes. Like my clientele, for the most part, is fairly unique. Like they want something different. They don't want the basic or everyday kind of things that you would see. I don't shoot very normal, if you will, but at least I don't think so. That's what I've been told. Maybe I'm wrong. Up to you. Doesn't matter. That's what my clients pay me for. So just if you're trying to stand out, like I'm here in Jacksonville, Florida, and there's a ton of new photographers and videographers on the regular. There are always new ones. They're always readily available. And because they're newer ones, they're always cheap. So that's not always a bad thing. You got to start somewhere, but it makes it difficult for us who've been here for a while to stand out because they go, oh, cool. Well, this guy does the same thing. What makes you different? And then when they look at your work, you have this image that they just can't explain what you did differently, but they know it's different and it feels different. So you have something else you can kind of offer over the next person. So to me, that would be reason number three. So you kind of stand out a little bit more. But honestly, I wouldn't recommend shooting a wedding on an anamorphic to have to pull focus the entire day anamorphic. Good luck. Props to you. Maybe with like an adapter to where I can throw it on like a zoom lens or something. But the, just a straight prime, probably not happening for me ever. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully that helped, gave you a reason to buy one. Um, I probably still won't buy one just because it doesn't fit how I shoot and or at least how I like to shoot. So this was just a video for you guys. And because I made the prediction with my friend, I felt a little obligated to make one because... How am I going to make the prediction of anamorphics and not make a video on it? Doesn't really make any sense. So I have a few more videos on the way. I promise. Hopefully they don't take as long. One might because it's actually a giant project, but see you guys on the next one. Peace.